Hey everyone, it's Cecina and I'm at the Butte Marriott Resort in Tempe, Arizona and I'm now here with 2020 Olympic silver medalist Richard Torres Jr. Richard, you were, your fight with Billy Jake Jr. was supposed to be in March, yes. but you tore your oblique. Can you give us a little bit insight of your recovery process and did it have any effect for your training for preparation for this fight? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the injuries come and go in the boxing community mm -hmm. and uh, we were able to take it in stride. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like a, a incredibly big injury, but right. my coaching staff said if you're not going to be 100%, you might, might as well go in there at all. Right. And so I took their advice and, uh, you know, just bit down the recovery process. Mm -hmm. Now I'm doing a lot more uh, warm-ups, a lot more cool-downs, a lot more ice baths, things like that. Okay. But I think it's just been a, a good process for me to, to take in because now I, I have that to further for further on in my career. Okay. And did it have any effect on your preparation for this fight? No, not too much. You know, as soon as we got the okay from the doctor, we were full fledging it. You know, okay. so and as soon as we were able to fully go, and that's what we did. And uh, it's been a, a grueling camp, and right. I'm, I'm thankful for it because now uh, fight time is where we get to show it off. Right, exactly. And you do a lot of old school training for your conditioning. Tell me a little bit about that experience and the effect it has during your fights. Yeah, so my dad was a uh, grew up on a farm, and okay. so he did a lot of farm work growing up, and he had a testament to his conditioning was through his farm work. Mm -hmm. And um, he instilled that in me at a young age as well, mm -hmm. from you know breaking up uh, concrete on the side of the canals to to filling up dirt and dumping it, right. kind of like Cool Hand Luke. Uh, you know, it's just been a, a testament of, of my, my town. You know, my town's kind of an old school town, okay. old country town, and. Uh, I bring everything that I learned from them into the ring. Okay, for sure. You're 5-0, five, oh, 5 knockouts. You've never let an opponent go past the third round. What can we expect to see Saturday night? You know, everyone uh, always like, oh, you can go for the knockout, you can go for the knockout. I, I never try to go for the knockout anymore. You know, I learned from the amateurs that if you try to go for the knockout, you never get it. So what and I'm... You could get knocked out. There you <laughs> yeah. Go. Yeah, so what I'm trying to figure out, or what I'm trying to do is I'm just going to go and show off the best Richard Torres as offer. You know, okay. so I'm, I'm going in there and I'm just going to try to perform the best of my ability and whatever happens, happens. Okay. And a little bit more personal side, I know you're a well-grounded individual. You're very centered and level-headed. Very Thank centered you. and level-headed. You have a strong connection with yourself and the environment around you. Can you talk to us about the importance of being centered and level-headed, not just in boxing, but life in general? I think boxing is an amazing thing because it teaches you how to be humble and a little more humble you know because as soon as you start feeling good about yourself and you start you know puffing out your chest you get punched in the mouth right you know so i think it's, it's a testament to boxing on on kind of why my manners but also my parents you know yeah. my parents kind of instilled in me that it's not just uh what you can accomplish but it's how you can make other people feel you know yeah. and if if I'm at the top and no one and no one likes it or no one uh, is cheering me on, I don't know if it's going to be the, the, the coolest thing as right. opposed to the other way around. Okay. And I've seen a lot of boxing comments that um, on your 80s style and look. <laughs> Does this look temporary or is it here to stay? You know, I kind of like the mustache. Okay. You know, I, I think the mustache and the kind of the style I'm going right. for is here to stay. I think it's more of a classic style and mm -hmm. I, I like it, but it's also testing my sister. She's the one that picks out a lot of my outfits. Okay. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm taking it in strides mm -hmm. from the 80s, uh, they call me the 80s cop or firefighter right. all the way to uh, naturally right now. So uh, I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to, to see what else I have to come up with. Okay. And last question here. Who do you have winning the main event? Navarrete or Valdez? Man, I like both fighters. Mm -hmm. I really do. And this is one of the, the times where it's like I don't really want to give a winner a loser just okay. because I like him so much. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, from the, the or, from the unorthodox style of Navarrete to, uh, to Valdez is just like boxing ability. Right. I think we're in for a treat. Okay. For sure. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate the time. Um, would you, you like to have any last minute words for your fans before you enter the ring? Yeah, I just want to say thank you again for all the people that support me. Uh, it, I mean, I wouldn't. none of this would feel the same way if you weren't there, so I really appreciate that. And uh, if you just meet me now, my name is Richard Torres. You can follow me at TheRichardTorres.com on Instagram. Uh, I post every day, and uh, stay tuned for a great fight on Saturday. And yeah, he's the one with the mustache. The mustache. <laughs> all right, thank you so much. So I appreciate You learn Spanish? Wait, you know Spanish? Estoy, oh. est, uh, estoy, more, estoy muy orgulloso de mi herencia mexicana. Uh, yo, tengo un, uh, cuerpo, yo tengo un cuerpo de americano y un corazón de mexicano y un sangre de un campeón. So, Ooh. thank you for everything. Ooh, okay. Uh, estás, estás aprendiendo. Uh, I know yeah. that. I know that. <laughs>